Hey, what's up, fam? With the release of Chapter 1 of Eden Zero, the newest manga by Hiromashima, uh, I wanted to get into the idea of discussing what Shiki's uh, fighting style will be. We, we kind of have a, a, a rough look in the first chapter, but uh, I kind of want to look at that in a more widespread kind of view and what we might get in the future first. But first... Um, I kind of want to talk about where we've been at before with uh, Hiramashima's previous main characters. Obviously not all of his main characters, just the ones from his big ongoing series. That being Horror Glory from Rave Master and Natsu's Ragnil from Fairy Tale. First we had Haru Glory, you know, young kid from Garage Island, who through the power of the Ten Commandments sword was given access to uh, a sword with an array of powers. He had a, a a large a large arsenal of of different powers and I'm I'm going to include uh, pictures that explain what each of his swords do within this and I'll I, but there was really a very uh, set kind of idea of what his fighting style mostly was it was mostly using using his swords to kind of set up a uh, set up an attack kind of using them in a combination attack usually most most used it was uh, using his Selfarion sword to uh, use his, its super speed ability what gives makes him extremely fast to move into his targets uh, maybe switching between rune save to uh, cut up elemental attacks anything magic uh, while he's going in and then ending with uh, powerful strikes from uh, most often, his explosion sword or uh, Eisen Meteor, his most basic one, which is just a uh, a big heavy sword that is immune to magic, and uh, or otherwise switching to uh, Gravity Core, one that is very heavy, like it has an extremely increased gravity around it, so it has uh, a lot more uh, swinging power than his other swords. He still had other things like uh, his Mel Force in order to uh, push back an opponent, an opponent, or uh, Mel Force to uh, move him very quickly by uh, using the vacuum of it, pushing out to uh, maybe throw him, project him up on top of a uh, up on top of like a, a building or you know anything of the sort. But uh, for the very most part of his series, though, he did use uh, Silpharion. For the added super speed, the uh, explosion for the main attack, and then rune save for the uh, magic cutting and uh, magic sealing. They were, they were really what he went, were his go to ones. He did have other swords like Br Blue Crimson, which was uh, two short swords, which gave uh, him access to one having a, being a fire sword, one being an ice sword. He had Mel Force, which uh, created a powerful vacuum and uh, pushed things away from him. It, it kind of just spread out this uh, big funnel of a uh, of force in a uh, in a direction wherever he was uh, pointing the flat face of the blade uh, he had his gravity core like I said was uh, just had a, a very highly condensed gravity field around the blade and when he swung it it just did a lot of extra power uh, sacrifar which uh, converted like anger and, and rage and hatred into power. He only used that once though so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, uh, oh, I, I skipped over a Million Suns, his uh, light sword that just gave him the power to uh, attack and dispel darkness and uh, you know gave him that buff addition of, uh, of light magic within the blade. And then his final one which kind of just became the default sword, the one he used for the most part which was Revel, uh meeting um, uh, Rave World in uh, using rave, and then uh, I think it was Velt, meaning world in German, you know, Revelt, uh, that it, it just seemed to be an overall more powerful sword than anything else. So with that, he it, his fighting style kind of went from using his swords in a combination to where he could get in and attack his opponent uh, to just using mostly Revelt, and then occasionally switching around, but Revelt for the most part because it just was... Uh, so much more powerful than his than his other swords, and and that was pretty much where he got for his series. His series is is much shorter. Than, I think it's um uh, almost half the length of Fairy Tale, but 
Yeah, you got you didn't get as much with a lot of the swords. Like I said, he only used Sacrifier once. He didn't use Million Suns or Gravity Coral that often. Uh, he used Melforce a decent amount. You you see him using some of these in the um, within the series as well as the Fairy Tale Rave Master crossover. Hopefully, we're gonna get a Fairy Tale Rave Master Eden Zero crossover, and we'll get to see him uh, use them again uh, in a much more detail or a much more uh, updated style of animation. That'd be awesome. But uh, next, we're gonna go to uh, Natsu Dragneel. Uh, fairy tale. So, and before Haru Glory was uh, more of a utility kind of based fighter, he used uh, his arsenal to kind of set up moves and set up uh, openings and, and, and more of a um, more of a situational combo kind of style of setup, depending on what who he was fighting, you know, where he was, and it was more of. Uh, not like in-depth, like hard strategy. Like it's not like he was a, a deep tactician, but uh, definitely more of a uh, a little bit of a, a combat kind of clever fighter. Whereas uh, Natsu Dragnail was much more of a berserker style. He definitely was. It, his biggest aspect to him was definitely his durability. He could take a beating. He was constantly uh, getting hit by attacks. Uh, I'd say he got he took way more damage way more often than Haru did. Haru was uh, as a sword fighter he was able to block more attacks where Natsu kind of just took them head on. You know, with his uh, dragon slaying magic being able to kind of well not kind of being completely to increase hit the composition of his body to make it more like a dragon. It even got to uh, uh, for a good instance uh, or for a a good example is when he fought Laxus and they. Uh, for the first time in the Fighting Festival arc. Well, the first time in the series, obviously, I know they fought multiple times before that, but uh, he would grab onto Laxus, and he, like, they just had each other's uh, arms, like, right at the forearm, and they were just, well, without moving, just throwing punches at each other, knocking each other around. Or when um, when he took on Gadgil's Iron Dragon Roar, and he had all these metal chunks just gouged into his body, and he literally melts all the metal out from each of his, and you just, from, he just melts all the metal, and you see the, the liquid iron kind of pouring out of the wounds, you know, it, it was a, a, a much more relentless, uh, onslaught-based style of fighting, he didn't, he didn't bother most of the time to, uh, worry too much about attacks, especially, you know, his, his whole buff with, uh, fire-based attacks, he was able to consume them, and, and, um, and become uh, more powerful from it. Uh, another really good example of, you know, just him taking an attack and head on. Like that was a uh, one of his big things. There obviously is with his durability. He wasn't afraid to uh, challenge an attack. Like when he punched Zero's uh, Dark Caprici. I don't know how to pronounce it. Word Dark Capricio. I think it's per Capricio. And just like it took all of his power to uh, just stop it. And it tore up his armies. He saw it all bloody and, and shredded. And he was having trouble standing. But he would constantly just keep pushing through. He would um, either uh, he would either bring up a you know bring up a, a power up mode. They would uh, work in a way for him to uh, get stronger via his allies or uh, enough of rage, kind of because the um, his fire, his dragon fire, was linked to his emotions. We found that out very early on, with and in, in his fight with Aragorn, and it, it eventually gets to uh, gets to the point later when he uh, fights Zeref. It becomes so intensely lit when he's literally burning up his soul, using his soul for fuel. It it was a uh, burning his his fire was burning away his own flesh. This is somebody who. Uh, is on fire all the time. You know, he's he's constantly lit on fire. It doesn't affect him. This flame is so hot that it doesn't only start to burn away his flesh, and he's able to keep going to the point where there's chunks of his body missing, but he's uh, burning away time. He, he fought uh, for spoilers. He he fought somebody who was using uh, raw time magic, magic that was uh, straight from the laws of time. And uh, he was able to burn that up. He burnt up the concept of time and the power source that let this guy do this. He burnt that away as well, something that had an infinite supply. And, you know, you just got to see uh, his 
he was very much a berserker combat mage. He, he he just kept getting hit, getting back up, you know, going back to try and hit his opponent, looking around to try and um, close the gap constantly. Whereas whereas Haru kind of said, Haru would kind of go with. Uh, using his different swords to try and deal with the strategy, Natsu was constantly trying to charge them head on. Much more stubborn, much more of a uh, hard-headed character, where Haru was more of a uh, much more of uh, trying to look around a subject, trying to figure out how he could, you know, get around an obstacle the best way. Natsu was trying to go through it. He would try and, and just you know break down what he could to achieve whatever he was trying to do. But with, with Shiki, you know, we, we don't really know a whole lot of about his about his power. We only got a, a little bit of this uh, of this ether gear that he apparently has. You know, we had we had the uh, variety tactical swordsman who looked around kind of situations and around problems to uh, this fiery berserker who wanted to break down whatever the obstacles were in his path. Just wanted to go straight through him, crush and burn whatever uh, whatever he had to to uh, get to where he needed to be. But with Shiki, we don't really know yet, and that that's kind of the the whole point of this video is is so far the only thing we really know about his power is he has some form of uh, ability called the Ether Gear, and with this Ether Gear, he's able to uh, take. The ether, I assume, I assume it's gonna pretty much be ether nano, kind of like in Fairy Tale, the kind of like the um, raw magic in the air. We, don't, it's fully unknown yet, but uh, taking this and uh, converting it into different ways, uh, using it to his advantage. Uh, so far, what we know about it is his is an anti gravity ether gear. Yeah, he, and it's it's not just weakening gravity; it's also increasing gravity from. Um, from what's been known, and I'll get to that of what I what I can make out from the uh, from the the first chapter to um, to you know where I got to where I'm now with uh, just my my plan over the last few days of uh, thinking about you know what I read with Eden Zero Chapter One when I first when I first read it a few days ago, but um, we see. We see, for one, him just, you know, slamming down on the first off on this big, like, cat robot to uh, being able to, to toss around these, uh, you know, heavy robots, being able to push around um, uh, this robot king. You know, all these robots have to weigh hundreds of pounds each. The the first, like, the big cat robot probably weighs a couple tons. And he's not only, only able to, you know, do that power-wise, he's also able to... Uh, run on walls, you know, run on ceilings upside down, uh, jump in midair, and then um, and then even kind of fly. He was even able to use his power to hover and then kind of fly sideways. And uh, whereas we get the cat, uh, the little, the, the cat lead, <laughs> cat lead, the, the little cute mascot who, uh, for, I think his name is supposed to be Smile, uh, I think he's also. I think they're gonna tell, make it out to be an exceed. But if you want to know more about, you know, my whole thing about the, I believe that uh, all these, all of Hiromashima's series are about to be connected into one universe. You know, I have a video for that. But uh, as he was saying, that it was an uh, an anti gravity ether gear, is with that com showing that he can use it to uh, pretty much make it so he's zero g to where he can just. Uh, float and then even d direct what gravity he's going with as we saw when he goes towards uh, Rebecca's ship that when he uses his attack he calls heavy fist it's not like he's calling it uh, you know like um uh, you know ultra strike or like power punch it's heavy fist emphasis on on heavy um, where he's using his anti-gravity gear to lower gravity to where he can you know walk on walls, walk upside down, and I, I don't see it as he's make that part making that he's zero G, as he's making it so instead of gravity pushing him down on the ground, the gravity is pushing him towards the building so he's able to stand on the wall, and then when he's running on the ceiling, gravity is pushing him up on the ceiling. 
and that would also explain when he's um you know when he's dodging the machine king's bullets he's able to jump in midair it would be you know he jumps and then he could change his gravity to where it's pushing him to the left and then it pushes him forward and then he increases gravity within his fists like he says heavy fists so maybe he increases gravity within his punches and he's able to uh, attack that way and it won't just be his punches it would be you know his kicks um uh, maybe like uh, elbows we don't know maybe he has a weapon we just haven't seen it yet and that's kind of where my th what i believe you know this is a theory speculation but you know, I'm, I'm hoping this is right so i could say called it first that uh you had haru whose whole thing was he was going to use his uh swords to kind of figure out how he could uh deal with the situation um with his arsenal you know he figure out which sword would be the best for what position and which sword would be the best to set out for an attack. Uh, Natsu, who would just be, you know, straight onslaught, go in, go in, go in hard, keep attacking, keep attacking, keep attacking until it works. If it doesn't work, attack harder. If it doesn't, if it doesn't uh, go then, attack even harder. And then with, uh, with Shiki, uh, I believe it's going to be more of kind of use the environment to his advantage uh, use his uh, versatility his his uh, ability to uh, you know seemingly move all over on these different side of walls with his uh, anti-gravity kind of flight his ability to walk on walls and ceilings uh, just to make it so he's so mobile that he'll be able to um, kind of work around an, an opponent and get them from blind spots, get them from uh, where they're not able to defend themselves, where they're not going to expect it, but also to where he's uh, not restricted as much on just being on the ground, where he'll be able to go anywhere, both on the, the terrains of the walls, the ceilings, but also the air with his um, anti-gravity gear, giving him a pseudo-flight by making him zero-g, you know? We'll have to wait and see, but that's what I'm, I'm going to go with now. That's my theory now, is his whole fighting style will be uh, based around using the environment to his advantage, using the terrain, and and kind of figuring out how he can use the terrain coupled with his uh, ability to alter gravity to his advantage. So, that's going to be it for right now. Uh, I hope that you kind of, I hope that you enjoyed what I, where I kind of went with this. I, I spent a, a while thinking about it, especially after the first chapter. This is the first chapter, so there's going to be a ton of speculation, tons of theories, and it's going to be pretty heavy until, you know, we get the first couple chapters in and we get stuff established. Like, we don't even know what Rebecca's power is. We don't even know... Um, we don't even know the villains yet. We don't even know uh, a more in-depth idea of how these ether Gears work. We'll find out in a few chapters, but this is going to be it for now. So... Uh, like, fair, subscribe, drop some comments uh, below on your opinion of this, what you would like to see Shiki like, how, how would you like to see him as a, uh, as a fighter. And, you know, like I, like I have to keep saying in my videos, uh, subscribe, if you want to know about, if you want to try and get information on Eden Zero and Fairy Tale and stuff like uh, Black Clover and My Hero Academia, uh, sub, sub here because you're going to get some of that information first, especially with Eden Zero and Fairy Tale. I, I did the very first um, Eden Zero Chapter 1 review on YouTube two days before any other YouTuber did it. I, I had it up before anybody else, and and that's where I, I think that you should... You can even check the times. I had it up two days before anybody else, so you know that I'm going to be the front runner for providing you information on Eden Zero and Fairy Tale. Because there is a, a sequel and a spinoff of Fairy Tale as well. And hopefully I will be able to kind of get into the circles with uh, Black Clover and My Hero Academia soon. So I can give you information and news on those upcoming chapters uh, before anybody else. So, yeah. So, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. Sadly, it is Monday. We're working through the week. But, you know, I hope that you strive well and have a fantastic weekend this weekend as well so thank you very much bye